Good evening. I'm A.M. Holmes. Grace Paley was the moral compass for readers and writers struggling to make sense of how the political and social changes of the 1950s through the 1980s changed their lives. She was passionate, opinionated, and eloquent. As much as she argued with the world around her, she embraced and celebrated it in her poems and short stories. Like the Star Wars Jedi Master Yoda, Grace Paley was elfin, wise, and deeply magical. She was a bit of a postmodern wizard, filled with knowledge and compassion, entirely without artifice or pretense. She never tried to be someone. She simply was. Too often described as a writer's writer, most likely because she wrote stories and poems, she was wrongly thought small in a world that too often celebrates the large, the novel. Her stories, intimate kitchen dramas, were mostly about women's lives, their relationships, marriages, and children, and reconciling oneself to the inescapable disappointment of human fallibility. At once personal and political, her stories were wry and inimitable. In 1985, author and now New Yorker editor David Remnick wrote in the Washington Post, her stories are a kind of New York chamber music in which the instruments are the voices of the city, more specifically Greenwich Village, more specifically 11th Street between 6th and 7th. Grace's work was deceptively conversational in tone. Her precisely turned dialogue lays bare the relationships between men and women. People said that Grace was a slow writer of modest output, which is frankly insulting. She wasn't slow, she was busy. <laughs> For Grace, writing was just one of the many things that happened in the midst of life, life that was filled with, well, life. She wrote as a single mother raising a son and daughter, as a teacher and as an activist whose activities included being jailed for her opposition to the Vietnam War, traveling to Hanoi on a peace mission, helping found the Women's Pentagon Action and Greenwich Village Peace Center, being dubbed one of the White House 11, and having been arrested in 1978 for placing an anti-nuclear banner on the White House lawn. She was an ardent feminist who loved men, a combative pacifist, and a cooperative anarchist. By the time I arrived at Sarah Lawrence College in the fall of 1983, Grace had already seen hundreds like me. The aspiring young writer come to sit at the feet of the master. You'll never get into her class, people told me. She's been away for a year and everyone wants to be in that class. I was working on my first novel. I'd already had a play produced. I was a transfer student, older than most of the others. I'd lived a little and been miserable a lot. Grace took me into the class and under her wing. In class, she spoke of writing the truth according to the character and the importance of voice. She was my teacher at Sarah Lawrence and forever after that. I remember being at her apartment on West 11th Street, freshly graduated from college, waiting to go over a short story. Her telephone rang, which it did frequently. Hello, Grace said brusquely. Oh yeah, hi, how are you? She talked quickly like someone who couldn't be bothered. And then slowly her voice and face relaxed. No kidding, really? She listened and talked and the call ended with, yes, of course, I'll be there, count me in, I'm writing it down. She hung up and tuned, turned to me. Why did you let me say yes, she asked accusatorily. <laughs> so many people wanted her, needed her. Just her presence made even the most difficult situations fun. And without a pause, she turned her attention to my story about a kidnapped young boy. Grace reread the story and looked at me. Clearly, he's not the right kid, the, not the kid the kidnapper wanted, so he has to return him. Just bring him back. <laughs> she was right. I went home and spent the next two weeks trying to make that happen. I think of Grace, and I think about how when I first read her stories, I really couldn't understand them. They were lost on me, and I didn't know why. And then I borrowed a record from the library. It was a recording of Grace reading Goodbye and Good Luck and a conversation with my father. And suddenly, listening to the sound of the writer's voice reading her own work, her intonation, like an incantation, made it all perfectly clear. I think of her story, A Conversation with My Father, written so many years ago, a well-rehearsed argument between a dying father and his spirited author daughter. The 86-year-old father lying in bed says to the daughter, I would like you to write a simple story just once more, the kind of Montpassant or Chekhov wrote, the kind you used to write. Just recognizable people and then write it down. What happened to them next? And the daughter says, yes, why not? That's possible. And while Grace Paley never really wrote a simple story, I think of a fictional mirror, Faith, and I imagine a story Grace never wrote. Faith, at 84, her whole life lived, now sick with cancer. 
What would she want to know? Where would she like to leave us? I think of Grace in Thetford, Vermont, with her husband and her children and their families around her. Grace Paley was hardly a writer's writer or a woman's writer. She was a force of nature. Grace Paley was a short story writer, a poet, a peace activist, a feminist, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a teacher, and a mentor. She taught me not just how to be a parent and a citizen and a writer. She taught me how to live. <laughs>